Okay, students. Assalamu alaikum. Let us start with today's lecture. And uh, today we will be studying uh, the chapter number five, which is about international trade theory. Um, for the past couple of hundred years, human beings have evolved the ways to exchange value. Of course, barter system was the very primitive form of it and people used to exchange uh, different things what they needed. But the major problem with barter system was that uh, you needed to have coincidences. For example, if I need rice and I can give you milk, of course you should be in the need of milk and you should possess rice that you can exchange with the milk that I'll provide. Now, it was very difficult for a lot of time for people to share uh, value or exchange things and uh, actually measure the value of things using something which can be used to give you a divisible form, um, a measurable form of measuring the value and exchanging it. So later on, people came up with currency and currency helped them to exchange things because they were able to measure the value of something in currency. Now, people first came up with fiat currency, which was usually gold coins or silver or copper or precious metals or other precious things. But later on, they found that there is not enough uh, material to produce such metal currency so they should convert to paper money so now we have a very uh, a frequent use of paper money we measure things uh, and their values in the form of uh, currency we can give every particular tangible product a particular value a price we can label it we can sell it for some particular price and People can pay using these papers that we call currency. Uh, on some level, if you think this uh, is not the only uh, option for us, for example, people now also use plastic money like credit cards, debit cards. You don't carry cash with you, you carry cards with you and they help you to pay things, right? So uh, this was a medium of exchange that human beings came up with to measure the value of something and to exchange that value with somebody. Now, when people got divided into different communities and national borders were established, it was very difficult to trade across borders. And as we studied in chapter number one, that international institutions were built and they were utilized to come to terms with international trade and the World Trade Organization was set up. Before that, CAT was there, GAWT. And the work of uh, WTO was to basically facilitate individual countries for trade between uh, the countries, the trade that can occur across borders. So with that in place, a lot of theories emerged that explained that how a country can benefit from multinational transactions. Of course, it was difficult for a lot of countries to engage into uh, trade right away because there are countries who are unable to fulfill their domestic uh, consumption. And there are other countries who produce different goods and services in abundance that they can not only fulfill the local consumption, but they have a surplus to exchange uh, with other nations across borders. So it was important to understand that how can a country get benefit from international trade. So a lot of theories came into this. Now we call them trade theories and all of that comes under one umbrella that we call trade theory. And first of all, the theory which got developed early in the 16th century and later on it was uh, re uh, refurbished and reproduced in the days of industrial revolution was free trade. 
Now, uh, by free trade, it does not mean that you have to give products or services free of cost. Free trade basically um, helps countries to exchange products or services without imposing any duties. For example, if I produce something in Pakistan and I have to export it to some other country, for example, if I want to export rice to Malta, so Malta will have its own import duties that I might have to pay, or Pakistan itself, my own country, might have some export duties that I, I have to pay. So that is one way of looking at it, that the cost of transaction itself can um, reduce the trade that occurs between the countries. Number two, there are quotas or duties. Quotas means that if you have to, for example, initially quotas, the word came when people used to exchange grains and spices, and a part of it was kept by the uh, local government from where it was being exported. So these things uh, were imposed. So WTO initially worked on this and helped countries to reduce it to a minimum level. Now we have uh, import duties that cannot exceed for 4% for 148 countries. And the reason for that is because import and export between these countries is regulated through WTO. So keeping this in mind, the first theory which came into existence about trade was free trade, where a situation where a government does not attempt to influence through quotas or duties what its citizens can buy from another country. See, uh, what happens, for example, when governments intervene in the business of different importers and exporters? At international level, countries see that what industry they want to promote within the country. If I want to promote a local industry in Pakistan, such as garments, of course, I can do two things. Number one, I can subsidize the imports for that industry. And I can also provide uh, different kind of uh, duties to people who actually export those goods to some other countries. So that way I can help the local industry. So governments intervene through taxes, duties, and quotas in order to keep the trade of a particular product or service in a regulated form. Now, free trade says that you have to get rid of those duties, those quotas and those taxes. So people can exchange products and services across borders free of cost. The transaction cost is not the part of their overall trade. Only the price that they want to charge on the products and services should be paid. If you look at the modern world, you can see that there are uh, some, uh, you know, some particular segments in the world that are using free trade. For example, the European Union is there where a lot of European countries have made a conglomerate to exchange products and services across the borders without any duties, any quotas. Now, uh, till 2020, uh, January 1st, 2020, Dubai was also a free port a port where you don't have to pay duties. It was a duty-free port. But now, uh, starting January 1st, 2020, they have actually implemented 5% VAT, which is value-added tax. Uh, again, there is NAFTA, the North American Frontier for a Trade Organization, and other such segments, where countries actually came up together and they decided that we will practice free trade. And this is one theory of trade that is being practiced on international level. Uh, how this help countries? Number one, it helps to uh, help countries to specialize in the manufacturing and export of products and services that they can produce efficiently. Let me give you an example. Not every country can produce oranges because you need fer fertile land, you need enough rain, you need enough cultivation and processing units, right, to produce enough oranges that can be consumed locally and then they can be exported. So if you want to produce high quality produce of oranges, of course you will have to put that much interest, that much money, that much capital and labor. 
but most of all you need to have fertile land so countries who have fertile land they can produce mangoes or oranges or other products like this and they can export them so countries who have these resources they specialize in them okay so first of all the first benefit is that countries who specialize in a particular product because they have resources of that kind they they can produce a surplus of a surplus of a good there are two points that you need to keep in mind first of all a country who want to export a product not only that country has to produce a surplus of the product but also the quality should be of such level that they can export it to another country again if you produce mangoes and oranges in such large quantities and good quality that you can export them to other countries you can always import other things in exchange of the goods that you export to those countries so most of the time what happens that countries who are engaged in trade they are exchanging products with each other again not only products services can also be a part of it for example uh, during the musharraf uh, time america gave us 6 billion dollars as a support to have us aid development projects in pakistan but 25% of that support was in the form of services they actually rendered for us it was not in cash or any other tangible form it was in the form of the services they rendered for us so usually what happens that countries not only engage in the exchange of products but they also exchange services with each other so the country who has a surplus of something and has a good quality uh, it, excuse me sir i couldn't understand the last point you said hello okay sir okay i will repeat it i said that a country who has yes. expertise of producing a product or service will produce it in surplus and in top quality so it can export it to other countries do you understand that yes sir for example let me let me reframe this in the form of a question and you guys will help me out pakistan kya kuch export karta hai what are the Medical top export okay good so we export uh, medical uh, instrumentation salt. okay we export salt we export sports goods we export leather products we export mangoes why oh, the because number one we produce them in large quantities that they are surplus above the local consumption the local consumption is fulfilled and then the rest of it is exported to other countries number 2 we are specialized in yes, them yes sir i i understood this one but i couldn't understand yeah what did the you know about the services part i couldn't understand the services okay okay i will explain that i couldn't that. understand the services part like how yeah pakistan right now is the fourth freelancing service provider do you know what freelancing is for example there is a person yes, sitting sir. in america and that person is running a business but the person can run a business very well but does not know how to do accounting or taxation for his or her business so that person can always acquire services of people who know how to do taxes how to do accounting and that person might be sitting in pakistan so what is happening right now is that pakistani pakistani people are providing these kind of services to all over the world and we are at the fourth number right now in exporting freelancing services in the world so not only we can export products but we can also export services okay got the point yes sir now uh, sometimes governments limit the import of something was the fear hote that the government says that i i'd want local harvesters to produce strawberry for example for the last 5 years pakistani people have engaged themselves in the cultivation and harvesting of strawberries a lot now what happened the government actually created an artificial restriction on the import of strawberry so the local production can be improved 
local production can be improved because when when you uh, see there is a demand in the country strawberries ki demand and people want to consume it and you actually stop the import of that product then the local farmers they get a chance to produce the product because they know the demand is there and they can produce it and sell it and eventually the local production will be less costly kyunki aapko import nahi karna padega so it will be less costly the amount that you have to pay on this would be a lot lesser than the product that you import from another country so these are the few benefits of free trade then after free trade uh, this next theory came which was the mercantilism mercantilism uh, basically advocated that we are merchants we are people who pr- produce goods in large quantities uh, this was mostly related with factories that were being established in 16th century in mid 16th century a lot of people uh, from their domestic production went into constructing factories so they were no more producing goods at home they were becoming merchants of different goods so they had a trade surplus that means they wanted to produce local goods in such a quantity that they always have a surplus and they can export the surplus ठीक है ना I hope you understand what surplus is surplus means that you have something in abundance uh, your personal consumption or the local consumption is fulfilled and then you have a particular amount of it which you can give away that you can sell out so 16th century mein ye hua ke a lot of traders they were producing goods and services uh, particularly goods isme for example milton mills ki ek bahut badi case study hai jaise london mein uh, cotton production was at its peak and uh, a lot of irish and uh, polish uh, labor was imported into london just to produce cotton in those fac- factories aur cotton looms jo thi unki badi badi factories lag rahi thi to cotton jo hai itna zyada produce ho raha tha that it was exported from london from england to every other part of the world of course to india also that's how the east india company came into india they actually came up with cotton they came up with cotton and they wanted to get silk from china and they wanted to get spices from india so that's that's how the east india company came into being they came through the sea route so bengal bay and the bombay bay these were the ports where they actually started trading these things and eventually they traveled through the silk road and a lot of theories go inside of that particular incident incident i don't want to go into that hum trade ke sath thoda sa stick karenge ke मर्केंटलिज्म ये कहता है कि ट्रेड सरप्लस जो है उस पे कंट्रीज ने काम करना शुरू किया गवर्नमेंट्स ने काम करना शुरू किया दैट एवरी गवर्नमेंट ट्राई टू ट्राई टू हैव अ पॉजिटिव बैलेंस इन देयर अकाउंट सो व्हाट हैपेंस व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट आवर करंट करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट व्हेन वी से दैट पाकिस्तान हैज अ करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट दैट मींस दैट वी इंपोर्ट मोर एंड वी एक्सपोर्ट लेस and when you export less and import more to aapko zyada paise dene padte hain aapko milte kam hai so that creates a negative balance of payment so we wanted to have a positive balance of payment isi tarah sare countries jo hain wo chahte hain ki unka jo balance of payment hai wo positive ho that means ki wo export zyada kare aur import kam kare so mercantilism advocated this theory that it is good that governments invest in exporting more and importing less that way they can produce more value but it was not viewed very positively it was viewed as a zero sum game that if every country will try to export more and import less they will only invest resources in those areas where they are very good where where they are specialized and a lot of things would be left out and eventually they will end up importing more than exporting less so ye eventually jo theory thi isko accept nahi kiya gaya iski jagah jo hai wo adam smith ki absolute advantage ki theory jo thi usne le li now you are you must be familiar with this name adam smith jo hai wo he was the most renowned economist i think by now he is the most renowned economist and he was uh, definitely the most renowned economist in the 18th century and he was a manager at a factory and he came up with a lot of theories about economics one of them was the trade theory of absolute advantage 
दैट नॉट एवरीबॉडी हैज एन एडवांटेज ऑफ प्रोड्यूसिंग सम पर्टिकुलर गुड फॉर एग्जांपल जैसे आपने बताया दैट पाकिस्तान एक्सपोर्ट्स सर्जिकल गुड्स स्पोर्ट्स गुड्स एंड अदर राइस एंड अदर थिंग्स व्हाई बिकॉज़ वी हैव एन एब्सोल्यूट एडवांटेज इन दीस थिंग्स वी आर अ कंट्री हु आर स्पेशलाइजिंग इन दीस प्रोडक्ट्स एंड सर्विसेज एंड वी आल्सो आर अ कंट्री हु प्रोड्यूस देम इन अबंडेंस बिकॉज़ वी the local uh, consumption is, is exhausted and after that we export the uh, other part of it which is left off now absolute advantage uh, seems very uh, easy to understand and seems very uncomplicated matter but that's not true absolute advantage does does not give us a uh, pure advantage over any other country because we might be producing rice and surgical goods but we might be importing a lot of other products for example we might be importing fruit vegetables milk meat we might be importing a lot of these things so absolute advantage does not mean that a country is doing really well absolute advantage means that you are good in only one area that you can produce more in that area and you can export that particular product or service but it does not guarantee that you you are a country who will be at the top of things so as compared to absolute advantage a theory which was given by david ricardo was that a country should go for comparative advantage now i will explain what comparative advantage is but before that let's see what david ricardo had to say he asked what happens when one country has an absolute advantage in the production of all goods is it possible that a country can have an absolute advantage in all goods that's not possible but even if it is possible the country would be only exporting everything and eventually it will not end up producing efficient resources because when your resources are diversified into multiple areas it is difficult to keep up the quality of the mass production that you are uh, actually experiencing in the industries so they came up with the comparative advantage theories that countries should only specialize in the production of those goods they produce more efficiently and by efficiency here we mean that with less resources for example agar aapke country ko koi cheez produce karne mein kam resources istemal hote hain to aapko wo cheez produce karni chahiye why because other countries cannot produce the same output using the input that you are using other for let me give you an example if if pakistan produces rice we can have uh, 16 ton of rice per acre we can have 20 ton of rice per acre but india has an advantage over pakistan of creating 40 or 50 tons of rice within one acre so both people are using the same amount of land the same amount of grain but the production is a lot more in india than pakistan and why is that because they are investing in technology they are investing in science they are investing in research behind all of this so a country can get comparative advantage when they can produce more output using the same level of input so ricardo said that countries should be working on comparative advantages and comparative advantages means that you produce the products and services in the most efficient form as compared to any other country then you are in the position that you can export it then you should trade it with other countries but what will happen in a world where comparative advantage is practice eventually aapke paas jo cheez hai wo cheez hai jisme aapko comparative advantage aap kam input use karke zyada output produce kar rahe hain kisi aur country ke paas wo cheez hogi jiski aapko zarurat hai lekin wo kyun wo produce kar rahe hain kyunki wo kam input mein uska zyada output produce kar sakte hain to eventually all the countries of the world will end up having comparative advantage in something so then countries will trade with each other the products they produce because they are producing it in the most efficient form and this is what he called is a positive sum game this is not a zero sum game this is a positive sum game uh, i hope you guys understand this if there is a question you can ask 
سر یہ جو ہماری پچھلی تھیوری تھی ایڈم اسمت کی تو اس کی تھیوری میں بھی تو یہی بات تھی نا کہ یو ہیو این ایبسلوٹ ایڈوانٹیج لائک جس چیز میں آپ ماسٹرس کر رہے ہو تو آپ وہ چیز ایکسپلور کرو دین اور جب کہ یہ اس تھیوری میں یہی تھی اس تھیوری میں یہ تھا کہ آپ کیا جو ہے آپ سب سے کم ٹائم میں لائک جو چیز آپ پروڈیوس کر رہے ہو اگر اسے کمپیئر کیا جائے کسی اور کنٹری کے ساتھ تو آپ بیسٹ اور ایفیشینٹلی لائک کم پیسوں میں یا کم کیا ہوگا کہ اگر آپ نے دو سو کلو پروڈیوس کرنے ہیں تو آپ کو لیے جو ان پٹ ہے وہ ٹو ہنڈریڈ یونٹ ہے لیکن دوسرا کنٹری جو ہے وہ ہنڈریڈ یونٹ میں پروڈیوس کر رہے ہیں ٹھیک ہے آپ کو ایبسلوٹ ایڈوانٹیج کیا ہے کہ آپ دو سو سے زیادہ بھی پروڈیوس کر سکتے ہیں کوانٹٹی زیادہ پروڈیوس کر سکتے ہیں کمپیریٹو ایڈوانٹیج ان پٹ سے ریلیٹ کرتا ہے دیٹ یو پروڈیوس دا سیم کوانٹٹی بٹ ود لیسٹ ریسورسز ٹھیک ہے آپ کی جو ایبسلوٹ ایڈوانٹیج ہے اس کا مطلب یہ ہے کہ وہ چیز آپ پروڈیوس زیادہ کر سکتے ہیں لیکن زیادہ پروڈیوس کرنے کے لیے آپ ان پٹ بھی زیادہ یوز کریں گے ٹھیک ہے آپ نے فیکٹریز آف پروڈکشن پڑھے ہیں نا لینڈ لیبر کیپیٹل انٹرپرائز تو وہ فیکٹریز آف پروڈکشن جب آپ زیادہ استعمال کریں گے ایک چیز میں فار ایگزامپل پاکستان جو ہے وہ سارے کے سارے پیسے ٹینک بنانے میں یا پھر فائٹر جیٹ بنانے میں لگا دیتا ہے تو باقی چیزیں کہاں سے بنائیں گے ہیلتھ پہ کیا لگائیں گے ایجوکیشن پہ کیا لگائیں گے تو آپ کو ایز اے پاکستانی نیشن وہ چیز پروڈیوس کرنی چاہیے جس میں آپ کا کمپیریٹو ایڈوانٹیج ہے تو آپ کا کمپیریٹو ایڈوانٹیج کس میں ہے جو چیز آپ کم سے کم ریسورسز یوز کر کے بنا سکتے ہیں ایبسلوٹ ایڈوانٹیج سے مراد یہ ہے کہ یو کین پروڈیوس دی میکسیمم کوانٹٹی بٹ کمپیریٹو ایڈوانٹیج مینس دیٹ یو کین پروڈیوس دا سیم کوانٹٹی وتھ لیسٹ ان پٹ گاٹ دی آئیڈیا اوکے سر یس سر ایگزیکٹلی اینی ادر کوسچن سو دس زوم سیشن از گوئنگ ٹو اینڈ بیکاز اف دا لمیٹڈ ٹائم اف 40 منٹس دیٹ وی ہیو اف زوم میٹنگ سو آئی ول شیئر انادر لنک ان دی گروپ Please join that so we will continue from this slide. Thank you.